Hi, I am Andrzej Gaydosh, the creator of OG Star Tracker, and in this tutorial I will show you how to use it. What you would need for astrophotography. You would need some uh, DSLR or Miller's camera for shooting the actual pictures and some lens. You can have some wide field lens like some 80mm ones or 50mm ones or you can use some uh, really wide some telephoto lens like I am using I'm using Tear 3 S it's uh, f4.5 lens with focal length of 300 millimeters it weighs around one and a half kilos and it's really good lens that I would recommend uh, that's one thing that we will need next thing that we will need is is Baffinov mask for focusing. It's really important to have the Baffinov mask. It makes focusing so much easier. Trust me. Don't go to the star trips without the Baffinov mask. It's a really useful tool. Next thing that we shouldn't forget when you will be bringing my star checker is to take the box with electronics and a laser. Laser is really important for foc for polar alignment and without the electronic box you can't basically shoot the next thing that you shouldn't forget is uh, this small cable that you are going to use for connecting the main electronic box to the star tracker don't forget it it's really important next thing that you are uh, that we are going to need is a power bank with micro usb cable for powering the electronic box Without it, you couldn't work. There are some basic things that you will really need to do astrophotography. It's a real basic kit and that's all you need to have. And also the star checker and tripod, yeah, but that's, that's obvious. So now we are going to move to doing actual astrophotography and I will show you how to polar align and how to take the pictures. So now I am going to show you how to polar align this mount. First thing first that we are going to do is that we are going to make sure that our tripod is uh, down and it's really nice and sturdy. We have some really nice and sturdy tripod. That's really important thing. If you want to go to the higher focal lengths, you should make sure that you have some nice, uh, big, sturdy tripod. It will help a lot. That's the next thing that we are going to do. If we can, we should attach some weights down to the tripod, so we will make it more stable. If we don't have any weights, it doesn't matter, we can use it without it. Next thing that we are going to do is that I will show you how to actually use it. First thing first is that we are going to take our camera and we will attach it to the star tracker. So the ball head on the star tracker, so it would not affect our polar alignment. Because if we, we would not attach the camera to the star checker, it could cause that uh, the weight of camera could move the polar alignment a little bit. It wouldn't be good. Just uh, have it tighten it on a star checker before you start doing the polar alignment process. And next thing that you are going to do and make sure is that you have uh, inserted a laser to the star checker. Uh, because that's a really important thing to do because without the laser you can't polar align or if you are using polar scope insert the polar scope next thing that you are going to do is that you are going to unscrew these little side things uh, so you can see it better yeah like this yes we will unscrew these side things like this yeah it's it's really tighten so now we had unscrewed these side things and we were going to move the polar axis up and down with this rod down there like we will just uh, rotate it and we will be moving it up and down so we, will, we could see the polaris after we unpointed the polaris we will go and we will tighten these side screws like this yes now it's done next thing for next thing that we are going to do is that we are going to a polar align in the other axis and we will unscrew these side uh, screws that are holding it and we will move it from side to side uh, if you are unscrewing left screw it will move to the right side and if you are unscrewing the right screw it will move to the left side so it's a reverse logic 
we will unscrew it and we will find a Polaris like this now our Polaris is now we have found the Polaris and we will tie it we will tie these screws like this so now our screws should be really tight like this and now uh, the polar mount the star checker should be polar aligned uh, next thing that we are going to do is that we are going to uh, remove the laser from star checker because you could by accident turn it on and it could blind somebody or you don't know what could happen so after you're done polar aligning remove the laser like this now we have removed the laser next thing that we are going to do is that we are going to take the electronic box that we have there we will attach it to the side of the star checker like this and we are going to take our micro usb cable and our cable from a stepper motor and we will connect it so now uh, there is the connector for a stepper motor from uh, from this electronic box and we will insert it there to the stepper motor like this nice after that we will going to insert our high quality micro usb cable you want to use some higher quality one because the cheaper ones tend to disconnect so use some good cable that you will connect to this micro usb port on it like this now it's connected and we will attach it to the side of a star tracker and now we are going to turn on the power bank uh, connect the cable to it like this and as you can hear the star tracker now started tracking and now you are good to go to focus the scope and find the targets that you are looking for now i will show you how to focus first thing first that you are going to do is that you are going to find some bright star and after that you will attach the baffin of mask to the to your lens like this after you have attached your baffin of mask to the lens you will uh, go to the live menu and you will zoom to the star that you want to focus on so now as we can see that is our there is our unfocused star and now we are going to focus it with this knob at at the at like this yes now now you can see that the diffraction spikes are in the middle like this which means that the star is now perfectly in focus and after that you can find the object that you want to shoot this is how the focused image should look like now i'm going to show you how to do the actual astrophotography first thing first is that after you have focused you need to choose the right exposure time and um, i have now chosen 30 seconds which is for half moon too much and i may need to reduce it because if we would look at the pictures you can see that the histogram is over on a half so it's overexposed and you might want to reduce the exposure time and uh, you might also reduce the exposure time if you are using two big lenses like some 600 millimeters uh, mirror lenses that uh, that it can be a problem to track these uh, maybe you want to reduce the exposure time to like 20 seconds to get the better results but if you are using like 300 millimeter lens like me you would have no problem using the 30 second exposure time like i am using so after that uh, we had set it our exposure time and next thing that we are going to do is we are going to uh, set up our intervalometer uh, and by the intervalometer you could uh, use the external one if you have it uh, you can buy it for like 10 bucks from amazon or you can use internal one i'm using canon 500d and it has uh, internal intervalometer that you can access via magic lantern which is mod for your canon that you that will unlock a lot of features of your canon camera and it will really help you but i don't know about the other cameras but for canon i recommend the magic lantern is really good and uh, you can uh, set up the intervalometer here and you don't need any external intervalometer 
So, so now I'm going to show you how to find the target. You will need to untighten your ball head like this. And after that, uh, you will go and you could look into the live screen or you can look in your uh, finder that you have on camera. Now I'm going to show you how to find the target on a, on a sky. Uh, first thing first that we are going to do, we are going to untighten our ball head like this. So now it's untightened and the tactics that you want it to use. Uh, you might want to do uh, star hopping, which means that you will be uh, taking a picture. After that you will look at the picture, you will locate where it's on the sky and you will compare it to the picture that or object you wanted to try not to find. And after that you will be moving closer and closer to the object. Or you can normally just use uh, your uh, polar f for your finder or your live screen and look at the stars on it and with that you can find the object that you want to find. It may take a little bit longer for the beginners, I don't like 20 minutes or 10 minutes, it depends on the object you are looking for or your nebula will take you like 2 minutes to set up, it's really quick and after that uh, as I said you can set up the loop at, at your uh, intervalometer and start shooting. Now I'm going to turn on my intervalometer and let it shoot for like one or two or three hours. It depends on how much time you have. But I would recommend going there at least a half or one hour to check it if, if, uh, if it's good and if it's taking the exposure. It's good practice to check your setup. So now we are done shooting and we will need to take the calibration frames. First thing first that we are going to do is that we are going to take the flat frames. For that we will need a tablet or a phone with a white uh, piece of fabric or you can use a paper like I am using. So now uh, we will reduce the exposure time. Uh, it may depend on your brightness or etc so it wouldn't be overexposed so like this this could work maybe and uh, i will use on my phone the white screen so you can so you so we can take the flats so now we are going to take a few flat frames but you should make sure that you, your screen is bigger than your lens like this and we can start oh oh no i forgot about the 10 second one yeah so now we can start taking uh, some flat frames uh we should take like uh, 20 20 frames should be okay it should cut it we will look at it and it's too dark so we should increase it to like 1 to 15 So we will look at it. Yeah. So now uh, we had taken our flat frames, which are very important, and I will say later. So now uh, our flat frames are taken, and we will now take our dark frames. We are going to take our camera. We are going to take the camera cover on it, and we are now going to take like. Uh, 30 20 to 50 frames and we will let it run for for a while until the frames are done and that should be all our calibration frames that you need to take after you are done shooting thank you for watching and building my tracker and in next tutorial i will show you more advanced techniques how to polar align or how to find some object uh, yeah, that it's really hard to find with your computer or how to polar align without a computer, without a polar style, uh, just only with your tracker and this setup with thanks to drift alignment. And then this, these things you will see in the next tutorial that will come in a few weeks, hopefully. So, goodbye!